<laughs> hey everyone, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI, that's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. We're doing a webinar, an InterNACHI webinar. We do free online, live, interactive webinars um, just about every week or so. And um, I sometimes do the presentation and sometimes we have a special guest and we definitely have a special guest today. Let's see, let me bring up the big homepage. We've got Spectora. Kevin from Spectora is speaking with us about um, some important stuff about this COVID and post-COVID uh, society we're now in. And um, what can we do as home inspectors um, to survive and also grow? Just keep on going with our um, marketing strategies and our business applications and what do we need to do to be successful? And so we love to uh, get experts in the field and Kevin and his brother Mike from Spectora are absolute experts. Um, they've been around for a few years and uh, I love everything that they do and their software is amazing. I've got their software on my phone um, and you should try out a, a, treat, uh, a free trial uh, and download their software on your phone as well and, and check it out. Um, Kevin, are you there? I am, yep. Hey man, thank you so much for taking a little time out in your busy day. I know you uh, serve a ton of inspectors uh, with your software and your services. You do websites as well. You know, the one thing I really liked about your, I, I never told you, but the one thing I never, I, I really liked about your software is um, it's not just software. So I, I took, you know, I stick my nose in, in a couple other things and the compare and so I can give good advice to other inspectors and our internet team members. And what I really like is the backend business stuff that your software does all the automated texting and emailing. Um, it's, it's amazing. So personally, I, you know, I got this story. I, I have a couple daughters, one's 18 and I'm, I'm teaching her some skills that um, can be applied in this new, uh, new world that we're going into. And so she's creating a, a website and she's doing, uh, figuring out what online scheduling is. And we're taking a look at square up and uh, um, embedding that kind of uh, online scheduling into her, uh, website and um, man, it is a pain in the <laughs> it is a pain in the butt. <laughs> I spent like four hours just trying to get <laughs> something to work, right? And yeah. software does that. All, uh, you know, it's it's part of this software, right? And yeah. I think that's just fantastic. I mean, but we're not okay. actually talking about that today. But if you wanted to comment on that and then tell us what we are, are actually going to talk about today, that'd be great. Well, I appreciate that, Ben, and, and thanks for thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. And, and as you said, uh, my name is Kevin Wagstaff, one of the co-founders of Spectora. Been around four years now. Um, serve a couple thousand home inspectors across the world um, with software and, and the back end tools like scheduling, agreements, payments, everything you need to run your business. And while that is important, we are talking more about current events in terms of how this whole COVID nineteen thing has shifted, and I think accelerated. Um, behaviors and things that are very, very important to every home inspector that's trying to run and grow a successful business. And so I do a ton of reading outside of our industry to see what other experts and people are doing in other industries like finance, tech, business, commerce. And, and I want to bring that to our industry. And so I, I view that as part of my job is to help educate much like Ben does um, with all the content he puts out. So I want to bring these topics to InterNACHI inspectors to make sure you're as successful as you can be in this new normal. Um, that's kind of cliche, but I think this applies to new inspectors and experienced inspectors because it's the way we communicate. And I think it's changing drastically. So awesome. that's where we're going today. So if you want to take over the screen and uh, take over the presentation, um, uh, if you are attending live the webinar, or if you're listening in on Facebook, if I hooked it up just right, Feel free to ask questions somewhere on your screen, probably at the bottom. There's a little uh, Q&A button. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, you can even vote up questions uh, for good questions. And I'll make sure that we uh, attend to your questions either during um, uh, the webinar or at the very end, we'll leave some time. So feel free to ask questions now or during. All right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I encourage dialogue for anyone that's seen me speak or, or, or seen anything of ours. I want this to be interactive and I know you guys come up with great ideas and questions. So, so please, please fire them off um, because this is, I, I believe, a very, very important topic um, on the business and communication side. So like I said, I, 
I, I, dip, I, I dive head first into kind of what else is going on in the world. And so um, let's see, let's pop in here. For those of you that don't know my background, um, I was a financial advisor, I was a realtor. So a lot of my experience comes from being a realtor and working with home inspectors on the other side. Um, and then I worked as an SEO specialist and marketing advisor. So the goal, I wanna give you guys actionable tips and plans in a mental framework for how the behavior, how your behavior should change and what's happening around this. Because um, part of our industry can tend to bury their heads in the sand and say, hey, this is the world as I know it. And these are things that I do, um, screw everyone else. But I, I wanted to tell you guys what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. Cause I, I do talk to hundreds of home inspectors um, every week and month, as well as agents. Um, so there's no shortage of headlines out there, guys. Um, I'm reading all the same things you are in terms of, um, of this COVID, of people working from home, of real estate being impacted. But this is one, con this is one concept and quote that always jumped out to me. Um, there's a lot of home inspectors that the past month or two, they have been fearful and they have just buried their head in the sand and not educated themselves. They've not been reading. They've not been reaching out to people. And so I want to encourage everyone here to say, hey, if others are kind of frozen and kind of tensing up and clamming up, where can I be aggressive in my business? Where can I do something that gets me ahead, gains a little market share? Or if you're new, gets, your, gets you in front of agents that aren't being communicated with a bunch right now. So get in the mindset of maybe going counter to what society and maybe mainstream media is telling you to be, which is fearful. Um, because you're in the business of trying to grow your business. And I think that's where we have to have our heads at to kind of tee this up. So let's talk about the shift. Um, a lot of people think this is a permanent shift and I'm, I'm one of those believers and that's, that's kind of what you see out there and that's, everything, that's what everyone is saying. And so we get that, right? We get that this is a shift to working remotely. This isn't a new concept though to agents. Um, as many of you know, or if you don't know, a lot of agents don't have an office anymore. A lot of them don't have a traditional Remax or Keller Williams office where they go in, they sit there all day, every day. I was an agent, that was four years ago now, and I worked for a completely remote brokerage. So I want everyone to understand now, you're not, when you're trying to find agents, you're not going into offices as much anymore. And I think this has been accelerated by 10 years. It, it, that number's not scientific. I just believe working from home and being at home now, everyone's been forced to do it. And I think people are seeing it can work. So I think you're going to see a ton of real estate companies say, hey, we're going to cut down on our commercial real estate expenses. Let everyone work from their home office because they already probably have it set up. So now you need to be thinking about how you're going to get in contact with someone who only sits at home on their computer and on their phone and on social media. So this is a shift that's already been happening. I mean, if you aren't aware of it, hopefully this just raises your antennas to say, okay, I have to be getting good at my digital skills and communication to adapt. Um, and it's kind of a weird concept for a lot of us, right? Building a relationship through Zoom, through this, through eye contact, through talking, and, and Ben is no stranger to this. And I think our job is to get you guys to start to build that muscle up because I don't believe you can build a long-term sustainable real estate or a home inspection business without building deep relationships. And now if your ability to do that in person and shaking hands is impaired and, and held back, you have to be able to build that relationship through a digital means now. And it takes a lot of comfort. Trust me. Like I still feel weird on camera every time I'm on camera. Um, but it's something that you build up and you build the muscle. So um, I think you guys have less competition to do this in your industry because there's not a ton of home inspectors that are rushing to get on YouTube, that are rushing to get on Facebook, um, that are rushing to create a good email newsletter. So think of this as if you have downtime in May, it, as things are ramping back up, and I think as buyers and sellers are getting more comfortable transacting again, um, which we're seeing already, you know, in my checks with agents around the country, we're already seeing activity ramp up. So I, I think the time to act is like today at 11 o'clock when this is over and start going. So I think you have less competition. There has been a segment of inspectors that have pursued other careers. And so I think while people are clammed up, you have less competition. Um, so agent presentations, let's dig in. Um, for those of you that do them or have done them or plan to do them, I just want to kind of get your, your approach to this where I see it. 
um, you know, this is where we're going to. We're social distancing, right? It's kind of the new normal. So you think people are going to be in a rush to be in a packed room like this with 10, 20, 50 agents? They might be, they might not. But the point is, if you want to meet with agents, it might be a lot of coffee meetings for either your big producers or even if you're getting started. When you go and meet a new agent and, and take the time to maybe get coffee, that tells the agent something. That's how you build relationships. Those agents might become the people that sell 20, 30, 50, 100 houses next year. So I want you to get in the mindset of thinking, okay, you can't fake this. You can't scale it quickly. It is a long-term game and, and we want you guys to build long-term sustainable businesses. So think of it as a lot more little meetings and a lot quicker, more efficient meetings rather than, Hey, I'm going to prepare for a presentation for a month or two, deliver it to a room full of 50 agents. Cause I'm guessing that that's going to be, you know, a lot less than normal now. Um, one example here, I, I just talked to Aaron, one of our users, uh, it was like two, three weeks ago. I asked him, I said, what are you doing differently? What are you doing unique during this um, lockdown? Because they're com they were completely locked down in Wisconsin. He put in, I think, a couple hundred dollars worth at least of $7 branded Starbucks gift cards. You can do that from Starbucks. You can get your brand, your logo, um, an Internachi logo pr printed on the card itself and then send these out to agents. And people are at home. People are checking their mail. Um, and he said, hey, when this lockdown's over, let's grab a coffee, um, talk about your business, talk about how we can help. So that's just one idea of thinking outside of the box that I kind of want to expose you guys to um, in terms of giving before you get. And I think it's hard to do, I think, when you're brand new. Um, but if you do have the budget, it's not money not well spent because I think when you give value first, I think you're always in a position to, um, to be in the good graces of those agents. Um, <clears throat> there's only so much time and I know that you can only get coffee with so many agents. Right. And so I think that should be part of your strategy. I think you need to be allocating part of your time to still the, the future of face to face. So it's not going away completely. I think we're humans. We appreciate seeing each other in real life. We like shaking hands still. I'm not an alarmist that's saying that's going away. I think it needs to be a part of your strategy. It might be a smaller part of your strategy now than it was. If that was 90% of what you did or what you plan to do, Maybe it's somewhere less than that, somewhere between zero and 90. So um, I, I can't claim to know the answers of how the future of human behavior will be, but just know that you're going to need to allocate some time in front of the computer as well. So I want you, want, I want you guys to think about supplementing your in-person contact, your agent relationships with digital connections. So the first part of that is video. We're on video right now. Um, and so if the thought of this terrifies you, trust me, I'm with you. Um, I've been there. I still in there. Like it, it's scary and it feels like something that that's tough to do. And like everyone's completely polished that does it. It's not the case. Um, I think you ask Ben and I candidly, we fumble around with this stuff too. And then we get in front of the camera and we try to focus on a topic to provide value. So I want each of you to, to hopefully work on that mental hurdle to say, okay, like, why not? Why not you to have a YouTube channel that really gets views that gets agents to visit over and over that educates home buyers on small things around the house. So these are some names to get comfortable with, right? YouTube, Zoom, iMovie, if you're on a Mac. I don't know the PC version of video editing software, but there's no shortage of them. I think a quick Google search um, will land you on some tools. And so it's never been easier to learn tutorials online to say, how do I use YouTube? How do I use Facebook Live? Um, Facebook's another one on here as well um, in terms of Facebook Live. but these are tools to get used to, to get comfortable with, to Google tutorials on, to just learn the basics of if you're just starting. Um, you know, and I'm talking to all ends of the spectrum here, I believe, of if you're brand, brand new, not familiar with these tools, cool, you can start learning. If you are familiar with them, start taking action, start getting on there and, and save yourself time by filming videos. And I think this is a big, what I want you guys to understand about video is you're leveraging your time more efficiently by doing this. Because if you went and talked to 100 agents and said the same exact thing in the same pitch, what if you put time into producing a really high quality video or even a medium quality video where you show your personality, where you actually talk and do that, you could send that to 90 of them and, and you leveraged your time efficiently. So what if, what if you could send it to a thousand now? So think of it in terms of replicating yourself in a sense by putting yourself on video. So you don't have to physically be there when you have video reaching people, maybe even on your home page. Um, of your website. And so we'll talk about that in a minute. But if you, 
the common question I get is, Kevin, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, you know, what do I talk about? What do I say? Um, so to me, I think you can never go wrong with being authentic. And so when you talk where your business is at, what you're thinking about the economy and actually being authentic about it, I think that resonates with people in itself, in and of itself. So I think you can't go wrong with saying how your business is maybe handling COVID or how you plan to handle it, your sanitary standards, kind of your wipe down procedures, things you can kind of just put together and put out there to show you're thinking about the same things agents and home buyers are thinking about. Um, I think everybody should have a why of why you're in this business, of why you care about homes, why you are a home inspector. Um, I think talk, like talking about that and getting those repetitions out, I think is a healthy thing as a business owner, but I think it's great for content as well. So I think you need to get repetitions and think to yourself, why am I doing this? Um, you know, and what, what value am I really bringing? And say that on camera over and over and it'll get better. Um, any updates to, to building guidelines, code, systems, components, any, the world you follow, I think is interesting to other people because they don't follow the things you guys follow. So if you're an expert in electrical or construction practices or plumbing, follow those sources and distill the information much like I'm doing for you guys. And so think about it in terms of like, you're an expert in certain areas of the home. Start there. Cause I think anytime anyone creates content, you're much better at it and you're going to get better quicker if you're actually passionate or have a, a, an interest in what you're talking about. Don't get on there to try to talk about SEO or building a website. If you've never done those things, that's just going to come off as inauthentic. Um, how to videos. I, we, most of you out there, I imagine know how to change a furnace filter, know how to check your AC unit, how know how to um, blow out your sprinklers. Think creatively of the things you just take care of around the house. Like those kind of videos are very helpful and you'd be shocked at, how low the bar is for quality on those because you're just showing someone how to do something and your audience is just trying to accomplish a task like your home buyers and agents. This is all shareable content too. So I think you, most millennials nowadays don't know how to change a furnace filter. So I think you, you can still do those videos and distribute them through your agents and home buyers. And then I think everyone follows their local market or you should, you should be going to Zillow or Trulia um, to find real estate statistics in your area you can comment on those and talk about real estate trends, even on a neighborhood level, if you're aware of them. So that's some ideas there. Um, I have a hundred others um, that we, I'm happy to talk about with anybody. All right. Um, I'm going to pause there for a second, just to make sure we didn't have any questions and to take a drink of water, but that's just like the YouTube rant. Yeah. One of the things that I see um, with inspectors posting some video content is that um, they may not be focusing on, their audience. So I, I have a feeling, I have no idea, I'm just guessing, that a lot of inspectors are actually posting for other inspectors to see um, what major defects and scary stuff they could find, uh, like in a crawl space or something. And that, <laughs> that, that's posting for like the wrong audience, right? You wanna post for maybe uh, existing homeowners or people who are interested in purchasing a home or maintaining their home or, and things like that. And it may not be like, um, you know, posting the most scariest, dangerous, uh, awful thing that a home could have. Uh, that, that may not be the, you have to pay attention to what, who you're talking to. And, you know, I think there may be a competition going on on, you know, between inspectors seeing who can post the most uh, hazardous situation. <laughs> That's a great point. Keep that in mind, yeah. Outstanding point. And I think, you know, there's a place for community building and feeling close to peers in your industry. It's a very isolated industry and we get that. Um, if you're trying to build your business, however, you're not, you're not reaching the right audience. So it takes empathy and it takes uh, sitting back and thinking like, okay, if you're a homeowner yourself, or you maybe even asking your friends that are homeowners that aren't as maybe technically, um, you know, inclined as you in terms of the business or the systems of a home and ask them what's interesting to them. What does the average homeowner think about when they move into a house? They're thinking about, I don't know how to fix these plumbing pipes. I don't know how to, you know, blow my sprinklers. They don't know these basic things. So think about, put yourself truly in the shoes of your agents and your home buyers. It's a muscle. It's a muscle that takes building up. Uh, now in uh, maybe you'll talk about this later. I didn't see your slides, but um, like SEO, should you always like end with um, NAP uh, name, address, phone number, or call me um, I'm big Ben inspections in Boulder, Colorado, 303-862-2611. Should you always say that in a YouTube video because it's part of a search? 
You know, if, if your videos get transcribed, um, I think you, you can and should. I think some people, I think there's automatic transcription service. I don't think it automatically posts to your description, but I would tell people focus on your YouTube description and title because that is SEO for YouTube, which most people don't realize is the second biggest, second largest search engine on the planet. So there's Google, then there's YouTube and that's the order of people where people search for things. So, um, I have, I actually have, I'll share this uh, maybe after the fact. I, I did some research and digging deep into writing better YouTube descriptions, using emojis, creating other links in there that kind of cross link your videos and back to your website. So there's a whole kind of strategy there um, that we can dive into. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Like SEO is another great reason for doing YouTube videos. Yep. And uh, some of the selfies, you know, it's, it's difficult to hold a phone and, <laughs> and talk at the same time, you know? So yeah. let me show you, let me show you something strange. So I, I just like experimenting th with things. So I yes. bought this silly looking thing. So you, you put your phone here, right? Uh -huh. and, on, and you can do a selfie without your hands. Oh. You can no, shoot it to, your, to that. This is really close, but you know, if you want to point it away and then do an inspection with two hands without carrying their phone, that's one of the things out there. I Come encourage on. everybody to leverage the, leverage the internet, leverage people in the industry like Ben or myself, and there's so many cool tools and ways to get around these like little hurdles. So any excuse you're making for yourself for not doing these things, like I guarantee you there's someone that's thought of it and there's a YouTuber out there that's solved it. Um, and there's ways to make yourself look way better than you feel when making videos. <laughs> Tons of stuff. I haven't even scratched the surface of them. So, <laughs> all right. Um, for those of you that, you know, that work with agents or in an area, I know there's some areas that are going to be locked down a little longer than others. So through May even where agents may still not want to meet with you face to face. That's okay. Because if you have a backup of saying, Hey, let's just do a quick zoom. We'd love to chat. We'd love to see how I can help your business. Um, we'd love to see how you're doing. Um, that really resonates and makes an impression with agents and zoom's free. Um, you can sign up for a free account and do unlimited meetings. Um, so to me, there's no excuse for not, offering that up as an alternative. Um, and, and also um, you can, you don't have to think about doing it on your laptop. You can download the app and do a zoom meeting on your phone. Yeah. And one, um, one kind of like, I guess if it takes the edge off of it or the, the nature to, or the, the, the instinct to feel kind of like you have to be completely buttoned up. It's like, Hey, we'd love to just have coffee with you over zoom. You could both be sitting there sipping your coffee, you know, at your, at your breakfast table. So agents are, really open to this. I want everyone to realize that. Like, like, I think, I don't know what perception many inspectors have of agents. I know a ton of agents. I used to be one. I frequented them a lot. They love doing this technology thing. So it's like, and they're totally open to it. Even if the average agent is a 55 year old woman, they're pretty good. They're, they're, they tinker a lot. So be, you can feel okay saying, Hey, let's figure this out together. Like, Trust me, your Zoom's not going to work. It's not going to open up properly. Like there's things that are going to happen, but if you just kind of can laugh it off and say, hey, that's just technology. Like we're, we'll figure this out. You'll be fine. Uh, start thinking outside the box. I always encourage inspectors to uh, maybe not follow the herd, not just ask what, you know, a thousand other successful inspectors did. I do think there's value in that. And, you know, I think there's value in doing what works but there's so much room to be creative in this industry. And I think you have to really think outside of the box. This particular guy, Brian, um, he was on lockdown, clearly out back with his smoker, it looks like. He put something um, out there that said, hey, if anyone's doing a DIY house project, hit me up. I'd love to give you some advice. I'd love to weigh in on it. Um, you know, we can do it through Facebook or through Zoom. He said he got three new agents that wrote to him and wanted to work with him just because he did that. That's, and it took him, it, look what he, he was probably holding the phone up. I don't, he may have had a tripod right there, but like, he just did a one minute video kind of cat, like just casual as it gets guys. So like, to me, to offer value, it doesn't have to be this huge buttoned up, like real estate update or this crazy thing. It can just be as simple as like, Hey guys, I'm willing to help. Like, let me know if you have anything that you need to have questions on. I'm your, I'm your local expert. I thought that was just really cool. And he did that kind of just for the moment. Um, all right. So tips guys, I, I want everyone to start to gain a little momentum with the confidence to make short videos and quick check-ins with agents and do Zoom meetings. So I do think you need maybe some baseline equipment. Um, I, I think a cheap, decent mic might run you 20, 30 bucks, right? So it's not, 
it's not going to break the bank. I don't think to get a decent mic and camera. I think I did it for maybe 50 bucks total or 60 bucks total. Um, your background, you can decide how professional you want to be depending on the agent and situation or what type of videos you're doing. I'm obviously very casual here in my home office. Um, you know, there's certain videos I do in Spectora's office or, you know, have a background like Ben has there where it just looks really buttoned up and professional. So um, be mindful of that. I don't obviously, you obviously want dirty laundry laying around behind you if you're trying to make an impression with someone that might give you business. And then uh, I want everyone to just stop taking themselves so serious. I think I, 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 pr I try to practice this every day and every week to just tell myself it's okay. Just take action and just, uh, and just get in front of the camera and start writing or whatever content you're creating. It does take a level of humility to just say, you know what, we're all just making it up as we go. And we're all just trying to, you know, put out content to help people. So I think get over that um, fear hesitation if you can. And I think that happens with repetition, you know, even if you're doing practice reps. Ben, I don't know if you've, felt that vulnerability over the years or if you've done it so long we don't feel it anymore but I, I think that's a big element to just getting over it and saying like you know what just start doing it yeah and um i've even told some of my staff like you know we have to remember um that people are now used to watching videos on youtube and facebook and instagram and everything and tiktok and uh, you could see a formal ad coming up um and the, you can't just, you can't wait to click through it. Like that bottom <laughs> little thing, like your ad will be done in two seconds. I'm like, I'm getting ready to click it. Yeah. Uh, the more informal you are, the better actually. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's not going to be always be that way. You know, there's always different expectations over time. But I think right now, I think you're right. Casual is, we're all casual now. And so the more informal you are and the more personal you are, um, more vulnerable you show uh, that you're vulnerable. Um, is better and it's really neat and speaking of equipment so i've got a i didn't know we were going to talk about all this stuff so i've got this little microphone it plugs at the bottom of my phone and uh it's actually uh -huh. just goes right in there uh -huh. um, if you could see it oh there it goes yep. and then um it actually turns and it's got a little you know um a wind thing on it so to have really good sound on your phone there's a little microphone thing so wow there. so you use that for walking around doing Doing yeah. content around a home, house of horrors. Okay, great. Yeah. And I've got a microphone pointed right at my face. Man, I th yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Casual is relatable. And I think agents, we view them as business partners, you know, in this industry, but they're still humans at the end of the day that want to work with people they know and like and trust. And so I think you can convey that through video um, the more you do it. Um, so action plan, no talk or webinar or anything is not worth it without an action plan. Um, so I, th I want everyone to create a YouTube account tied to your business. Um, and if you, you can Google this to say, create business YouTube account or create company YouTube account. It's pretty simple. I remember, I remember thinking back, setting it up in a couple minutes. It's not going to be tied to your personal account. Cause I think YouTube create, if you have a Gmail already, you can have a personal YouTube account, unless you're trying to build a personal brand, you probably want something under your company and business to keep it all, um, business or agent facing. Um, so that's step one. Step two, I want everyone to tr start with maybe even five minutes a week, uh, you know, or a day if you want to be aggressive. But I think get in front of the camera and click record for five minutes and start with talking about why you started your business and act as if you're talking to your neighbor or a family member, you know, maybe I pretend that a family member's in that camera and they're saying like, well, why did you, why did you start? Why are you being a home inspector? And just try to articulate that vision. I think it can go a long way. Um, I am a huge believer in, in getting it out there into the universe, speaking that vision over and over and, uh, and you start to really believe it. And then when it comes out to agents, it sounds very authentic. Um, and so I think you need that repetition. So whether that's on zoom or YouTube or Instagram live, Facebook live, um, I don't think you can go wrong. I don't think, I don't think there's any downside to this. Um, and then set up a free zoom account. I think that's a no brainer because when you do email an agent, Zoom makes it very easy when you log in to just say start a meeting or schedule a meeting. And you can just send agents a link that says, hey, um, or when you pick a time and date to meet, then you can send them um, a Zoom link. So that's, I tried to make this as approachable and uh, as easy as possible with those couple steps. So I think that's what you should do if you wanna get started in video. 
All right, we're gonna dive into social, everyone's favorite or not favorite topic, um, depending on who you are. And I wanna preface this by saying, guys, like I'm no expert in social myself. I'm learning all these platforms just like you are. You know, I, I'm by no means a, uh, you know, a young millennial that just zips around this stuff and is second nature to me. I'm still figuring it out. I ask our younger employees how to use certain things. Um, we're all doing it together. We're all diving in and learning these things. And Ben is probably the best example you guys could have of someone that just dives into this stuff and says, you know what, I'm just going to figure it out. So um, in our industry, and Ben, you can correct me if I left any major ones off here. I feel like I think about where agents and home buyers are and a lot of it, it, it's hard to, the big monster in the room is Facebook that they're not going anywhere. I think the majority of the world still uses Facebook a ton. Instagram is gaining steam with agents. Uh, LinkedIn is a professional environment that agents, of course, try to connect with home buyers and home sellers. And then, um, I, you know, I'm seeing some people on next door asking for recommendations. It, it's that's less so. That's more of just like being a part of your community and maybe getting referrals and recommendations occasionally. Um, but that's more of just being a staple in your community. Did I leave any off, Ben? Any majors? Yeah, uh, those two. Those are. I, I'm not sure about Twitter, um, but Facebook and Instagram. For sure. Yeah. I know you and I both post on Twitter and I see your stuff on there and it's like, we, we obviously want to just reach anybody and everybody, you know, but I think agents still hang out in different pockets. And so it's worth checking. I think if you, if you go into any platform, I think I'm jumping ahead, maybe my slides, but if you go to any platforms and just search Denver realtor, Austin realtor, Seattle realtor, you'll see how many active agents are on there. And that's use that as your proxy for how much time you spend there. Not, how much your kids use it or how much your neighbor, you know, your friends are on there, how much your the people that are actually going to feed you business, how much time do they spend on it? Um, something to remember guys. I, I, I know years ago, Facebook has changed things up over the years because it, they're a public company. It turns out they like lots of profits and billions of dollars. So your posts necessarily aren't always going to get seen by all your pages followers. Um, so just don't, I don't want anyone thinking, Hey, I have a thousand likes on my Facebook page or, Hey, I just need to get a bunch of likes and then I'll be rolling around in money. It's not necessarily that simple because when you post Facebook has a vested interest in you boosting your posts or paying money to, for ads, they want you to buy ads basically. So, um, it's worth noting it's a nuanced game and, uh, you want to post for engagement. I think that's another point. Um, the most common mistake I see is in home inspectors over and over saying, Hey, need a home inspection call 303, blah, blah, blah. It's like uh, most people aren't on Facebook looking for a home inspection. Um, they're there to engage with content, to find something that's useful, helpful, funny, entertaining. So keep your posts almost anti-sales. I don't almost want anybody saying, Hey, looking for a home. No, it should be, Hey, here's some interesting trends about my local market. Here's something that's going on with a, a new building that's going up downtown. Like if you're a source of quality information, they're just going to think of you or find you and it's going to result in that. And so it's a little bit of blind faith, but like I've seen this enough to kind of understand it and know it with all the years and kind of marketing and branding is that the hard sell is such a turnoff and Facebook knows that. And I think they show your posts less when they tend to be salesy because salesy posts don't get engagement. And I think, um, Ben, I don't know if you have any experience with that, with, with all the stuff you guys do there, but it's, it's kind of tough to get direct response on social. It's more like you're the king of putting out good content in our industry. And I think like that alone tells us that's the way to go. Yeah. Uh, short and sweet too. My, my daughters always remind me, I just talk too much. So uh, <laughs> the, shorter, the better. I love short little videos that are entertaining or valuable. And I, yeah, keep that in mind. Short oh. and sweet. I, I need to take some of that advice. Some of my demos I do get long winded and it's like, boom, chop it up, chop, chop, chop it up. Yep. Um, I think this is no secret guys. I social is a weird beast because I think it doesn't come natural to a ton of, of home inspectors or folks in our industry, but it's where agents spend a ton of time because that's where the buyers are. So I, I, being active on there, I've definitely seen some inspectors and in some businesses really grow their agent following through social. It's not, it's not a 90% activity. It's probably not even a 50 or 60% of your time activity, but it deserves some mind space based on the results you're seeing. And so I think you have to be aware and in tuned to the engagement you're getting on there. And then does that agent actually follow through and work with you eventually? 
Um, or are you just putting kind of funny throwaway stuff on there or, um, but I do think it's a place to get brand impressions by participating in conversations and being a relevant, um, having a relevant presence. So we're not going to beat this up for a, a ton, but I want to give you guys some tips. So I think I see a lot of half baked profiles on social. Um, you know, I, I follow some inspectors that have decent sized businesses and then I go to their social and their description doesn't even say all the things they do or how you can contact them. And so I think that's a, a, an easy one to think, to put some thought into, okay, if an agent clicks through on my profile, what do they see? Like, what do they, what impression do they get about my business? How professional I am, how to contact me. Um, I think that goes a long way. That goes for LinkedIn, Facebook, anything else you're on. Um, so don't be, don't have half baked profiles. Think of social as real life. This is going to sound, this is going to be really weird to think about, but like I, I've lately been trying to do the exercise of when I'm on social, when I'm posting, pretend that person's in the room with me and what I would say to them and just try to be as natural as I can. Cause I think there's this feeling to kind of put on a facade or kind of be this kind of person or have this expectation of who you should be on social or what you should provide. Or do I, do I, do I try to get a bunch of likes? Am I trying to get a bunch of shares or am I just trying to be authentic? And so I always tell people to add value when you can. So if an agent um, is posting about a certain topic or a certain home, I don't think liking posts is enough anymore. I think you should, you can still do that, but I think you want to comment on their posts and maybe give some insight or say something about the style of home or where it is, the neighborhood or adding some kind of value with leaving a comment. And so I think social media is often seen as like, how much can I post and put out? but you can't gain a following if you're not participating in someone else's conversation. And I think the biggest way to reach uh, an agent's heart is to stroke their ego. Um, you know, I can say that as having seen it work over the years, if you're there commenting in kind of their biggest cheerleader and doing it on, in an authentic way, you're going to win some business. And I've seen it happen a lot over the years. I like asking questions uh, in an age where everyone's an expert. Um, I'm a big fan of asking what people think. And I think that's a very endearing quality. And I think it's a very humble quality to say, hey, what are you seeing out there? What does everyone think about this? I think that'll, that adds value because it invites people to engage with you. And then be yourself. I, I, I tapped on that a second ago. I think be yourself within the boundaries of being professional and people that you want to make a connection with. Um, obviously there's professional standards you kind of want to adhere to, but you know, it, it, the bar is not extremely high. I think the agent inspector relationship in some cases can be very casual. There are certain agents that are very buttoned up. Maybe your top producers, maybe the luxury space. You, you kind of have to know your audience, I think, is the moral of the story. Um, and any comments there, Ben? I, I want to, because I know you, you were a home inspector in a very premium area. And so I want to make sure I'm not missing the mark there with what you experienced. Nope, uh, you're, you're spot on. Um, and sometimes, uh, yeah, people want more information if they want to take action. So because they are interested in what you're saying, and then they go to your profile, and there's really nothing there. There's, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, a dead end. So yeah, making sure people can actually contact you uh, is important if they actually want to contact you. Yep. Yeah. Calls to action and so much so like parts of our websites today were inspired by Ben's earliest advice when we first got in the industry of like, have big giant buttons and phone numbers for the thing you want them to do ultimately, because you will, you would be surprised. Some people are just like, Hey, I just want to get in contact with this company. Give them the opportunity to, because if they have to work too hard, they're going to leave. Yep. Uh, action plan. So five minutes a day. So whatever platform you feel is appropriate for your area, it's probably going to be Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter or LinkedIn. I want everyone to just search and follow 20 realtors in your area. It's dead simple. You search Minneapolis real estate agent, and then you follow the first 20 that pop up. Um, yeah, some of them are going to be posting what they had for breakfast and their kid's birthday party. And that's okay because they're sharing their life on social. Like, I don't want that to turn anyone off because when you're building a relationship, part of it is taking an interest in their life. And you can't do that with, you know, 10,000 agents, but you can do it with some that start to tell their other agents about you that tell people in their office or in email newsletters. So follow them first and see what kind of content comes up. Um, and then I want you guys to actually comment on other people's posts. And so um, if you're brand, brand new, 
I think you do have to have a couple posts on your, on your feed to kind of show that you're at least starting to be active. Um, you don't want to have an empty personal feed when you go out and start posting on everyone else's because then when they get to your account, they'll say, oh, is this guy even in business? Is he brand, brand new? So maybe start your account with, you know, five, 10 posts. But otherwise, I want everyone spending 10 minutes a day just commenting on other people's posts and engaging, um, and particularly agents. And then uh, for five minutes a day, I want everyone to find a photo or a post to give insight or an opinion on something and showing personality. I think we, this is kind of the theme here is that it's okay to let a little of the personal lead into the business. Some people keep that strict division. Um, and I think you can make cases for both, but I'm a big fan of like, hey, if you, if you have a great moment with your kids or your wife or something at home, put it up and comment on it because it's authentic. Um, I think if you only do that on a business account, that could be a little um, either distracting or kind of telling the wrong story, but I think you wanna mix them in. The best accounts I've seen have a healthy balance of like 70% business stuff, 30% personal. And I just made that number up, but some mix of, hey, I'm a human, I'm a person that leads a life and has interests, um, but also here's some helpful information about my, my, my expertise. Yeah, and common ground is a pet. So if you have a pet, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know what the stats are. There's like in the United States, like 90% of us have pets and dogs are, I think, and dogs and cats. I don't know. I think there are more cats than people in the United States. So if you have, <laughs> if you have, a, if you have a, a pet photo, a dog photo, a cat photo, post that. Yep. Oh, promise you'll get the highest engagement on that. And if you can like somehow tie it into your business or job, like it just plays well. I think it's, you know, I've seen guys bring their kids, you know, uh, or showing their kids something about home inspections or having their dog, you know, whether it's, there's creative ways you can do it. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to design a, um, a face cover, a COVID face cover for a dog, but yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> over the bridge of the nose without restricting breathing. Oh, well, it's tough. It, yeah. It, it's the way they're built makes it very yeah. tough. <laughs> um, so email, um, and then any tying, any tying up th thoughts on social, because I know it's often a confusing thing. Most guys are just like, well, which one do I even get on? How long do I spend there? Hmm. Any parting thoughts on how to use it to help your business? Uh, I think you're right. You, you do a little bit every day and make it fun for you to do. Because um, the other thing that is disappointing is when... Um, you, you're following a couple of videos and there's a dead end because you haven't posted anything for two months or six months. Who knows? Are you still in business? Are you still interested? But so make it fun for you. Make it like something fun. Like, you know, my daughters and I, or my wife and I, you know, we, we have fun uh, um, doing things together, like taking pictures and things like that. And if it's fun for you, then you'll probably be interested in doing it a little bit every day and um, watch your time. You have to manage your time. Don't get sucked up doing social media for two, three hours a day. It's really a, a short, sweet kind of thing. And it's fun. I love it. And for the, yeah, for, it's easy to get sucked in. Um, you know, we all have stories of that. I make it a mission to go directly to our business page. I don't even hit my personal newsfeed because I know how easy that can be. And so I don't even, I don't even look, I literally divert my eyes until I click on the little um, drop down to get to the business page. So um, you got to, you got to be guarded over your time. Even if you're a new inspector and you have more time than money, your time is valuable right now because I think there's lots of opportunity out there. Um, all right, let's get into email marketing. Um, these are the two companies that help you send email and newsletters, uh, MailChimp and Constant Contact. The two that I know of, there's a couple other really good ones coming up um, that I know of. Ben, what do you guys use? Are, are, there, are there good ones out there that you know of? Those two. We cool. use both of those. Yep. Each all other. right. They make it easy guys. They have templates. Like I, I was a complete noob to email marketing years ago when I jumped on and they really guide you through it. Like they, they make it dead simple. So, um, you can look very professional through these templates in here. Uh, I get this question a lot. Do agents really want another email? Do they actually look at email? No one looks at email anymore. Um, I can tell you people don't look at crappy, spammy automated emails anymore. People look at good emails. I look at certain newsletters I, every time I, I look at the InterNACHI newsletter every time because I know there's quality information in there. Oh, so I you. think use that as a 
like every time you click through to any newsletter or source, I want you to think about the aspects of that that made you click. Why are you interested in that? And it takes that being aware in the moment to say, okay, now my email newsletters, they better have some meat to them if I'm going to send them because I'd rather everybody not send an email newsletter than do it in a very automated, low effort kind of way. Because I, I think the mindset is the practice of sending an email newsletter is good. It's like, no, just doing it's not good. I think it's the value you're providing. And I think that's, that's kind of, you know, modern content marketing 101 is the world doesn't need any more canned stamped out newsletters that go to every, you know, that every inspector sending out. So it does take a little bit of effort. It takes some curating of content. Um, I would, I would encourage everybody, um, to just, if it's, it feels too easy, if you're thinking and you found a source where you're like, oh man, this will go out to a thousand agents. It's just, I'm not gonna have to do anything. I don't know if that might be the best way unless you're really in touch with the person that's doing it and you understand what they're sending. Cause I think there are decent providers that will, um, do it for you, but you need to know what's going out because what if an agent asks you about it? Then you're gonna sound you're gonna you're gonna sound like you don't know what's going on in your own business. So um, again, we've all seen stuff that's high quality. Copy those. I googled it the other day because I was just curious. I just said, "Hey, look, what are really cool email newsletters looking like elsewhere in the world?" I, I came across a HubSpot article that showed me 17 newsletters that they love getting. Cool. I'm gonna go find those. I'm gonna take bits and pieces from them. You don't have to make it all up, guys. Some of it's just copying what other people are doing. Um, there's home inspectors that are doing it really well. There's a couple home inspectors I know of. I get, I, I'm on their newsletter and I'm not even an agent or home buyer. So I, I like seeing the content that they put out. So, um, ask me for examples. Ask, I'm sure Ben has plenty of examples, like reach out. Um, one thing I want to, I, I bolded the word curate here because it doesn't all have to be something written by you, the home inspector. I think there is I know Spectora and Internachi for a fact, not unbiased at all, are put out a lot of content, some of the most in our industry that we want you to share. That's the reason why we put it out because it's good for you because you're sharing knowledge and it's great for people like us because you're linking back to an article of ours. So I think if you're just the delivery of information to agents who don't maybe know these sources, you're winning still because you're providing value and you're pushing it through. So that's what curating means when you're finding other good sources over here, you're packaging it up and now you're sending it out in an email with only a couple links per email. So think about that when you're pinging your agents is Zillow puts out tons of research on real estate markets. Truly, I put, they, they all have research departments that put out great stuff. You can't assume these agents are finding that information because I can tell you agents within their first couple of years, some of them are clueless when it comes to finding data and insights on their own industry. So if you're the source of that, guess what? You win. They love you. So think about what they want to see. Think about what's interesting to an agent. Um, there's no shortage of local news. So I think there's always locally slanted real estate news, or even if it's feel good stories, I think people don't mind that being in a newsletter if there's a local um, feel good story. And then don't be afraid to give your opinion in an email newsletter. If, if you link to a certain topic or story, it's okay to kind of give a, uh, give an opinion or a slant on it or say how you feel about it. And that's a good way of creating content is linking to an article and then commenting with a paragraph or two up above it. So that's an easy way to produce content is find something interesting and then give your take on it. <clears throat> Quick action plan, create a free account on MailChimp. It's easy. Um, I believe it's still free um, up until a certain amount of contacts, but um, import your agents. You can tag them as different types of agents, whether it's brand new or VIP and send based on those tags. Um, and then I want you guys to just research some sample newsletters. I can send you that exact link from the HubSpot article if you want, or you can just Google um, top email newsletters. And then I want you guys to spend 15 minutes a month. This isn't even a day or a week. Like this could be done in 15 minutes if you put your mind to it to find interesting or helpful content in your local area. I always start with like, okay, nationally, what are mortgage rates doing? Nationally, what are real estate statistics doing? Or you can go down to your local level. So be time, spend time being curious and finding interesting content so you can deliver it to people um, that you care about. 
Whew. All right. Any, any, anything on email, um, Ben? Because I, I know that's a whole other world. We could probably spend a whole you know, hour on email. Yeah. And if you're trying to figure out like, oh, what kind of, what, um, what contacts do I import? Like there are probably a lot of real estate agents in your neighborhood um, if you don't know. So there are a lot of uh, millions of real estate agents. And I uh, just met one um, just a couple of days ago in my neighborhood because I walk around now and, <laughs> you know, we walk over the fence and um, maybe they're not the busiest uh, real estate agent. Maybe they're not the top uh, 10 producers in their office or so, but um, you, you'll be surprised. Um, now's the time. So walk around your neighborhood, get to know your neighbors, tell everybody what you do, and maybe you'll bump up in, into a couple of real estate agents that you can import into your uh, email database. Completely agree. You kind of got to own it. You got to, you know, walk, you know, was it fake it till you make it? It, it? We all are to a degree. And so I think you speak as if you already have a kick-ass newsletter that you're sending and you'll get it there and it's okay. And there's leeway and people understand. So um, even if you meet three agents, you can manually enter contacts into MailChimp. So I think if you email an agent, Hey, do you mind if I shoot you just updates or market updates? Like rarely they're going to say no. If you ask very straightforward and directly with a clear value proposition. Um, all right. So guys, I want you guys to own this stuff. Um, part of this, yes, it's my opinion and experience, but I'm also telling you what I have been seeing in other industries. I listen a ton. I ask questions a ton. I, I just want to get as much information I can so I can translate it through um, to specifically Spectora users, but all InterNACHI users. Because I want the bigger our industry gets, the better it is for everybody. And I think there's still not enough high quality companies. And, and I want each of you listening to become the next one because there's so much more opportunity out there. It's insane. Um, and so I think every recession, there is a divergence and there's companies that kind of fall back and, and kind of clam up. And I think that they stay stagnant or they slowly decline. And then there's people that really rock it out of recessions and really, um, you know, come out of it strong. And there's plenty of examples of that in previous, you know, from the previous recession, from the mortgage crisis. So I don't want you guys to ignore trends. I want you guys to keep your antennas up and, and be aware of this stuff and continue the conversation because we have to push ourselves and each other um, to keep finding ways to be better. And so I want everyone to seek out information and resources um, find experts in the field, find content online. I mean, yeah, you can't seek out enough information. So stay connected. Um, and yeah, that, that's all I got for the deck. There's a link. Um, I put it on our website. If anyone wants to go back through it and kind of internalize some of this, I think sometimes it takes time to revisit resources and videos to actually let it sink in. Um, so feel free to go to that link and, uh, and yeah, right into our chat bubble if you need help with anything software related or if you want to talk about this stuff. I know InterNACHI has a marketing team. We have a marketing team. Like leverage people that have done this longer than you and that have ex expertise. And, uh, and yeah, let's, let's, let's get the opportunity that's out there. Like I get, I get so excited because I know I've seen it work and I've seen it happen when people just nail these right things and get in touch with people in the right way. So and, I talked and, longer than I wanted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being longer winded. No problem. No problem. And you're right. Um, you got some good points. Great points. Like um, now's the time. So if you haven't yet scheduled a home inspection today, um, I always say, you know, put on your shoes and go to your office, no matter where that office is. It could be in your kitchen, it could be in your bedroom um, and get to work. There's always something to do in your business. And now's the time. Um, and we do have a question. We have one question. Oh, and Ben, uh, before, we, before we get into that question, yeah. I want to remind everybody that um, this period of work, it's going to feel like you're doing a ton of work with no return in the near term. Mm -hmm. So think of it as like farming, like you, you're planting these seeds that will grow in June, July, August, September, October. So I don't want anyone to get discouraged. It's like the tree falling in the woods. Does anyone hear it kind of thing? It's like, you have to Take it from people that have done it and look at, look at for examples where it's worked and, and just have that faith to say, hey, these are good activities that provide value. They will happen. And it's kind of like building up that snowball effect. So that, that's all I wanted to make sure that no one got discouraged with like, oh, I've been posting on Facebook for two weeks now and like I haven't gotten an inspection. Right. That's normal. Let it grow. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, give before you get. So that's what oh, you said earlier. Well, I love that. So I wrote that down. Give before you get. And uh, we have John. He asked, um, how much is the software? So he wants to go back to the software. Is there a monthly or a yearly fee? 
Um, there is either. So you can do monthly or annual. It's $99 a month if you start with monthly. Um, it gets cheaper if you do annual. So then it ends up being about $83 a month if you do annual. And then um, websites and all that separate. We have a jumpstart package um, actually with a, a nice InterNACHI discount that's only InterNACHI members get if you do um, the software for a year and a website. So it basically gives you everything you need to run your business except your domain name, which you will need to buy from like a GoDaddy for about like 10 bucks. And that's, did you say $83 a month? That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, so if, you, if you want those uh, discounts, I have them, just email me. Uh, Julie asks, um, get over yourself. Wow, I needed that advice. <laughs> Thank you, best <laughs> words. And then she asks, um, what are your thoughts about joining BNI? And um, that's that uh, uh, Business Network International, right? Yep. Yeah, um, thank you for that. And I, and I didn't mean that to sound, I don't, hopefully that, that didn't come off harsh to anybody. It was more of an, an endearing way of like, we overthink and get in our own heads. And I think I, I'm very guilty of that as well. And sometimes you just have to hit record and start talking and fumble through it. So basically it is encouragement. So thank you for that. Um, I think B I've heard BNI be the number one thing that has helped certain businesses in an area. If it's, um, it, it, I know it's a, it kind of is regional. I've heard BNI in certain regions, it's big. And in certain regions, there might be a group without a home inspector in it already. So I think everyone should check in on it to see if it's active and if it's something that meets on a r regular basis and there's no home inspector there. Even if there is, the future of these types of things, we'll see. Um, they might be virtual, but I think you can't go wrong checking these avenues. And, and, and so I, I know that's kind of a, an on the fence answer, but you have to see if it's active, um, but try it out once. You have, no, you have nothing to lose. I want everyone to just try more things. I think that's kind of a big theme of just try it and pay attention to the results. And it's, I know it's easier said than done. <laughs> and just um, a couple minutes a day, um, just yeah. consistency, I would say. Bite size, take off bite size. And it, makes it, and it makes you feel more accomplished when you take off bite size chunks of anything. So like, I try to remember like, okay, just make my two minute video today. That's all, that's like all I wanted to accomplish for the morning. And once you get past that, you'll move on to other things. And so um, I think Ben had great advice. Everybody get up, do your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face, like get in front of the computer. And then, you're, then you don't have an excuse when it comes time to hit record on the video or to get on a Zoom call or to write an article. Like you're already feeling put together. And I think um, I don't do it every day. I, I need to follow my own advice more, I think. But I think the more you do it, the more you're prepared to kind of kick ass and do something that moves your business. Shoes. It's the shoes. There's something about shoes. Something about shoes. When I put on my shoes, I'm at work. When, working. I, when I don't have my shoes on, I don't know. It's something, <laughs> it's something about shoes. It it's starts a rather it casual feeling. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> hey, buddy, uh, Kevin from Spectora, I really appreciate your time and sharing what you know and keeping uh, being in front of everything, keeping uh, us informed of all the trends and uh, sharing your opinions and uh, the opinions that you have from all of your uh, users, your software uh, users uh, that share with you and want to share with other inspectors. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me and thank you for all the work you do in our industry. I think we don't have enough voices like, like you and I that I think are just trying to just find what's out there and distill it for our industry. Um, Cause I want us to be more on the forefront of these things, you know, and to be utilizing all these tools. So I think you're doing great work and I appreciate it. All right, everybody stay safe and healthy. See ya. Bye everybody. Thanks Kevin. Bye.